Section 9.7 is on catalytic hydrogenation. In this reaction, we are adding hydrogen across the double bond. So for example, if we take this particular alkene, we use the hydrogen molecule H2. This molecule is catalyzed. Typically with platinum, there's a few other substances we can use as catalyst, which I'll show you in just a second. And the product is addition of two atoms of hydrogen, one to each of the carbons in the alkene. So it just converts an alkene to an alkane, and no change in any other aspect of the molecule. Uh, the platinum catalyst oops, catalyst can be replaced with palladium or with nickel. So down here you're going to see either platinum, palladium, or nickel as the catalyst. The reaction is pretty simple um, for all of these alkene addition reactions. We've been considering three things. We've been considering whether or not the reaction is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition. In this particular case, in this particular uh, reaction, the hydrogenation reaction, Markovnikov's rule does not apply because we're adding hydrogen on both carbon atoms, so you put one on each one, you don't have to think about where the hydrogen goes, they go everywhere. So that's easy, that's one less variable we have to consider. There is no rearrangement in this reaction. The mechanism for this process isn't really understood. I'm going to show you a, a picture of you know what what we think it looks like, but we do know that there's there's no rearrangement taking place ever, which means we're not going via a carbocation intermediate. And so that's also one more variable we don't have to consider. In terms of the stereochemistry of this reaction, if you do produce a, a chiral carbon over the course of the reaction, the hydrogen atoms will add to the alkene anti to each other. And this will produce some specific stereoisomers in the products, if assuming that we have chiral carbons. Let me show you a picture from your book that sh demonstrates or explains why we get anti-addition. So this figure, this is on page 419, and this figure down here is showing in the dark gray. This is the metal surface, the metal that's being used as the catalyst, like the platinum or the palladium or the nickel. And so the theory uh, of what takes place in this particular reaction is that the hydrogen molecule will come down and attach itself, stick itself onto the metal surface. And the metal surface will break apart the hydrogen-hydrogen bond, so you get individual hydrogen atoms that are just hanging out, stuck on the surface of the metal. And then, in, as the reaction is taking place, the molecules are flying around. An alkene will also come down and bump onto the surface of the metal. And when it lands down on the surface of the metal, it will pick up the hydrogen atoms, do the addition reaction, and then fly off as an alkane. Because of the way the metal catalyst holds the hydrogen atoms in place, they're always going to be guaranteed to attach to the same side of the molecule. Now I think I just realized that I said anti. That's totally, it's too early in the morning for me. Sin, not anti. Dyslexia. Sin, hydrogen atoms had sin. So the hydrogen atoms will stick themselves on the same side of the double bond every single time because the metal catalyst is holding the hydrogen atoms 
in place and forcing them to add to just one side of the alkene. The alkene doesn't flip itself around, uh, turn itself upside down. The hydrogen atoms don't break free from the metal surface until they've attached themselves to the carbon atoms of the alkene. So every time they go on, they will add syn. So this means when we're looking at a molecule that has chirality, unlike the example that we have up here, the example that you have in your book is this molecule right here. We'll use a different catalyst this time. And the way that we're going to draw this is by just using wedges to show that the functional groups that are already present on the alkene are going to stay on the same side of the molecule and the hydrogens that we add to the molecule are going to be sent to each other or on the same side of the molecule. And we're going to make the other enantiomer because we don't have any reason to think that every single molecule is going to strike that metal surface in the exact same orientation. So we're going to get both of those products. You could get away with just drawing one and writing plus in antiomer. That would work as well. Let's do another example. For this molecule, it's actually symmetrical. It's a meso molecule. So there isn't <coughs> two, <coughs> excuse me, two products in this reaction. The two products that we would draw. Are actually identical to each other. If you took this one, if you built a model, if it's hard for you to visualize, if you took this molecule and flipped it like a pancake, you would see that it's exactly the same <clears throat> as the molecule on the left. Let's do one more example. Uh, again, all you have to worry about doing is making sure you can just pick any two functional groups that are on the same side of each other on the original alkene. So let's just take the isopropyl group and the ethyl group. They're both on the same side. They're cis to each other on the alkene. Let's choose to just make those both wedge and dash those added hydrogens. After we've drawn this molecule out, we can see that this carbon atom over here that we've given stereochemistry by drawing, or we haven't given it stereochemistry, we've drawn in a wedge and a dash, we can see that that carbon atom actually isn't chiral. It's got two of the same uh, functional groups present. So we don't need to be worrying about indicating any stereochemistry on this carbon atom at all. This is our only chiral center. We've got... Um, two enantiomers that we can draw, one that looks like this, and one that looks like that. Put parentheses around that since that was just our scratch work. Make sure that I didn't lose anything. Practice this with Skill Builder 9.5 and the problems that are in Skill Builder 9.5.